What is up, Stockton, California? This is 93.5 KWDC Delta College Radio, and I'm your girl, Carolita. And this is your boy, Choi. We got the mayor leaking up in the building. What's up? What's up, 209? <laughs> we out of here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, Stockton? You're listening to 209 Talk on 93.5 KWDC Stockton. 209 Talk is a collaboration where local college students sit down with the mayor. The show you're tuned into right now was put together by students enrolled in the broadcasting courses in the digital media department at San Joaquin Delta College. Thanks for listening and supporting College Radio. I'm your girl, Carolita. And this is your boy, Choi. And we have Mayor Lincoln in the building. What's happening, everyone? Good to be, be, good to be with you, if I can just get that out <laughs> this morning. You sound just as nervous as I am right now. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a little bit intimidating sitting across the table from you guys right no, now. I, I, I think it's the mic. Uh, for some, yeah, I don't think it's with the, the mic and the, and the lights and the camera. I don't think it's us. Yeah. Because why would you be nervous with us? Yeah. No, because we were fine when the, when the camera wasn't rolling, you know, and the mics was off. Like, we was fine. Like, really, though. But as soon as it says it's time to action. Lights, cameras, action. I'm not I'm not made for this life. Does it to the best of us. That's it. All right, cut. Let's run it back. No, I'm just kidding. So this week we are going to get to know you, Mayor Lincoln. So how are you? How have you been doing? I am doing... Fine. I'm doing good. Yeah. Is that a real answer? Or it took a minute to answer. It that. is a real answer. Yeah. It, it, it really is. Yeah. What I've learned in life is just everything's about perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? And for me, um, I try to be very intentional about seeing that glass half full. That's hard, especially nowadays, but with gas being five dollars again. Almost five dollars. My tank is half full. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I look at it. Empty. That's how I look at it right now. On my way on the drive here, I was looking at my uh, my meter. I was like, man, my, my tank is half full. I'm good today. Right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you that yeah, my tank is actually full because I filled up yesterday. Okay. <laughs> See, there you go, right there. Pers right. Perspective. <laughs> perspective. That's all we have. To, that's all we have. You go to Costco or Safeway because those are my two favorites. <laughs> Whichever one I'm closer to, <laughs> yeah, and they're my favorite because they're the cheapest. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hold on. Where 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 is the cheapest gas in Stockton right now? Costco. Or Safeway? Costco or Safeway. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Especially Costco. If I go to Costco though, I don't fill up halfway. I have to fill up all the way because I sit in that line for so long. I have to do the whole tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Quality, premium, gasoline mm -hmm. at a great price yeah that's costco so you feel a, so you feel a premium <laughs> they could probably run an ad with that right <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're gonna hire you they gonna need you as a commercial <laughs> <laughs> you better get that big, big bucks mayor right if they, if they come with you for some ads get that big bucks <laughs> are you allowed to man, are you allowed to do that you know as you're making that comment i was saying that if stinking Oh, I have to volunteer uh -huh. that type of service. Yeah, you have to right. volunteer. I can't. Yeah, yeah see, I was right. uh, when I was saying that, I was like, "Hold on, is that something like any 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 political figure can do?" To like, you know, I know like the campaign, uh, like the you know when when there's campaigning or uh, campaign season, like there's ads, there's you know all of that, right? But like as far as like Costco, right? So you wouldn't be able to uh, get paid for like commercial spots or anything. There are rules, yeah, that govern all that. I didn't so, see. I did not know that. Yeah. So the president is not allowed to own like a business, right? While they're doing it, are you allowed to? There are rules that govern all that at different levels. Oh, so okay. there's different rules at different levels. Yeah. We'll okay. be here all day if we try. To I, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> break the code. <laughs> break the code. At the end of the day, I have to do what's right. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, no, no, respect that. Yeah. And what's what's right right now for you is the city of Stockton. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the city of Stockton, my family, mm -hmm. our community are all things that are that are important to me and that that are right, that are top of mind, top of priority for me. Can you tell us a little bit about like a story you, that you have in Stockton or about Stockton? Since you you were you born and raised here? I was born and raised in Stockton. Can you tell us a story that since you were born and raised here, a, a story since then? Some of my fondest memories especially as a young man, was I would spend my summers uh, with Stockton Parks and Rec at Anderson Park. Mm. Um, between Anderson Park and Seaford Center, that's actually where I learned how to play basketball uh, and learned how to play basketball competitively. 
And uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I built a lot of relationships. Uh, there was a lot of mentorship that took place for me personally uh, in that season of my life. And it was a very tough time within my family. Parents were split up and, um, you know, I had a lot, I got a lot of personal direction in that season just by being in those environments. So basically like, org like having an organization and structure, right, help you get get through like what were you going what was going on at home that's right and that, yeah. it was and it was the community yeah. that helped me out there absolutely mm. that's why community is so important to me and that's why i love doing what i do and i really genuinely mean that is because um the, you know as a kid the city's given back to me a lot um you know my father um kind of in my family, there was a, a generation that took from this city, yeah. right, by making poor choices and, and decisions. And now I'm in a position to give back to the city as the mayor. And, you know, I have two high school students, a 17-year-old son and a soon-to-be 16-year-old daughter, a junior and sophomore. And now we can continue on a legacy of, of, of giving back to the community as well. Can you tell me more, like, what are the poor decisions? Because when you hear poor decisions, it could be multiple things. So what are those poor decisions? Poor decisions. It doesn't specifically have to be your dad or anything like that. But what are some of those poor decisions? Well, I'll just share uh, the decisions that have directly been a result of my family and the impact. Um, and that was uh, substance abuse. Um, it was crime. Um, it was uh, just things of those natures that took from the community, right? And, um, you know, my dad found him self in a position where he was actually homeless yeah. um, during my teenage, some of my teenage years. And that was really, really hard because he was making poor decisions. And he'll tell you that led him to that point. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you know, he, he, or maybe fortunately, because his perspectives, how you look at it, um, he was in, incarcerated for a couple of years. And that helped, he'll tell you, that helped him get his mind yeah. right. Um, he got really rehabilitated. He came back into the community and he spent the next 25 years giving back to at-risk youth. And what I tell people is that, you know, all the years I didn't have with my father during my childhood, there's nothing more that I can ask for as a son is that when he got his life right and together, um, he gave to so many at-risk youth in our community what he could never give me. And I'm thankful for that because I walk around this town today and I interact with people that come up to me and say, man, we love your dad, Coach Kevin, because we have the same name. Yeah. And uh, or they ask me, are, are, are you are you Kevin Lincoln's son? Uh, and and I'm proud to say yes, right. And that's just to me, that's one example of many Stockton stories. And that's how I feel I could relate to the to the people of Stockton is because my story is not much different than than, than theirs. Now, I I definitely appreciate you being, you know, vulnerable enough to share that, right? Because this is like. We all like we all have family stories, and sometimes it, you know we all we don't want to put that out, right? Because it, it's it's something that maybe we aren't comfortable with a lot of folks knowing our stories, right? Because you know it's something that hey, this is sacred. This is you know fam, family family dark dark secrets, whatever. You know what I mean? Especially um, in like the being a mayor, yeah, up to politics, people right? People talking about it exactly, and 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 in the political arena. You know, we don't hear a lot of vulnerability coming from politicians. You know, and, and for you, and for you, and for you to share that, though, you know, you know, it, 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 I appreciate that because it, it, it now what it does is it it opens up and allows folks to to really like get to know you, right? And, and say like, yo, you know, he's actually one of us. Like, you know, he go through some. You know, I was gonna say some. <laughs> he go through some stuff too. You know what I mean? You know, like he's he's been through some struggles, and and that's that's relatable to 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 the folks out here in Stockton. You know. Um, you talked about I'm talking about your father being in, you know the, uh, um, incarcerated and being one of those that took from the community, right? And we and we had this conversation before because I was one of those who took from the community, you know. Uh, uh, I took a lot from the community, you know, um, things that I can't give back, right? And you know, here I am, you know, I, I do have a platform now and and able to give back, right? And you know, I work with, I work uh, uh, for a very great, great organization in Stockton, you know, um, and we hold uh, um, 
you know, workshops in City Hall. We work, we hold workshops in City Hall with at-risk kids, you know, and 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 like coming out and being released, like it was a whole new uh, for me. It was like I have an obligation to give back to my community, you know. Um, and so just like you know the, the story you shared with your father, like I'm, I, I felt that because that's that's the road I'm on right now, you know. So I appreciate you sharing that. No, absolutely. I always believe everybody has a story, um, and every story is is important. And it's critical that we do share our stories because our story gives hope to other people. Um, it, it, it paints a picture of, of opportunity as well. It sends a message that my past doesn't define me mm -hmm. um, and that I can choose to make the right decisions today that's going to help chart what my future looks like or tomorrow looks like or the rest of my day looks like. We get to make those choices every day. And we, you know, we get to make poor choices and we also get to make positive choices. Yep. And, it, and, and it's up to us. And that's why it's a priority for me to spend so much time with youth and, and, and in our school system um, to work with the education partner, my educational partners, their school districts, so that we can all do our part to engage and empower and bring hope and opportunity and inspiration to this next generation. Because 10, 15, 20 years from now, one of these kids that I, I've been meeting with and visiting at these schools is gonna be my mayor mm -hmm. one day. Yeah. Um, is gonna be my physician one day. He's gonna be like, I'm hey, a, mayor, remember that one time? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pull up in, in, in my electric vehicle and they're gonna work on my electric vehicle or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like whatever it is, th that's why what we do what we do yeah. is, is, is for the future. Absolutely. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. What are some of the, um, what is your administration putting in place for the future? Like you're saying you're giving back. What are some of those things that you, your administration is giving back? Well, one of those things that uh, I've been a huge champion <coughs> of, and it, one of the things I've been a huge champion for and a huge proponent of, obviously, is, is youth, right? And youth programming and development opportunities. And uh, one of the things we're rolling out uh, here at the next couple of months is a youth workforce development program, summer jobs program directly with city in city hall and also with uh, our community community partners through community based organizations. Uh, so that's significant. And the way that we built the program is where it's scalable. It's built to last. And so as long as we can continue to provide funding for it to meet this critical need and create these opportunities for in career pathways, uh, we're going to continue to to do that. How uh, how how I want because I want to ask about like you know like the programs and the funding to right like if if there's a program that is shown to work, right? But then funding may be short or cut. How can we ensure like? programs, you know, programs like that or similar continue to get the funding that is needed to, you know, to keep thriving and to keep, you know, uh, uh, helping folks. We have a lot of great organizations in Stockton. That's what I love about Stockton. There's a lot of great community-based organizations. You have like two, over 2,000? Like, yeah, nonprofit yeah. organizations that do great community-based work. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we focus on as well is is that, that nonprofit CBO uh, capacity building yeah because you're only as healthy and as strong as your organization mm -hmm. and and what contributes to that is how your organization is structured we help our nonprofit organizations uh, in partnership with united way of san joaquin mm -hmm. county right so we partner with them and, and they do the work united way is kind of like the the uh, chamber of commerce for nonprofit organizations. So it's all about capacity building. And then, you know, we want to see these these organizations that help us with some, you know, get these programs off the ground, we want to see them be able to build in sustainable funding um, as well, right? And we help them with that. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm going to do that to, 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 you know, because I, I, I also, no, like there's struggling organizations out there, right? Just barely keeping afloat, you know, uh, but do great work, you know, um, but to have like resources like that, you know, um, it just seems like they just, all they have to do is just reach out and just, you know, hey, just 
plenty of resources resources out there for the community. One of the things that 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 I created and stated was um, a budget finance and economic development committee. And the purpose of that is to create a space where if the community feels like they have a solution to meet a need, right now we've been talking about youth, um, that's a that's a space where they can come before three council members, pitch their their idea, and council periodically has discretionary funds um, that we can allocate to pilot programs like that. And so by creating that space, uh, we're able to create more opportunities because it's not, you know, we, we want to create programs and opportunities that will meet the needs of the community. Mm. So it's not a top-down approach. It's not the city of Stockton, everybody at the top, quote unquote, is, is saying here, you're, we're gonna do this program. No, it's, we wanna hear from you community, what are the needs out there? What are your solutions? What's the cost? And then how can we take the next steps to working together? Okay, we're gonna take a little break right here, just to get it all organized. Okay, we are back, we are back, and we were talking about the youth and um, the organizations and the funding um, and one I want to ask is like, what kind of activities are these that these fund that these fundraisers or what is it nonprofits are putting together for the youth? A perfect example would be uh, this program I'm working with the gentleman from uh, uh, down so- in Southern California, mm-hmm. uh, who's from Stockton, uh, very successful, very connected, pop culture. And uh, he wants to come back and, and, and invest in Stockton and invest mm-hmm. in the youth. And so that's an example of, uh, of me uh, bringing them before uh, our council and, that, and a committee uh, and allocating funding for them so we can get this pilot program off the ground. So we're talking about um, youth uh, activities, um, trips. Uh, we're talking about uh, focus on social, emotional learning and uh, mental health, right? Those types of uh, issues that are hitting the impacting the core of, of our young people in today's generation, and then being able to leverage celebrity and pop culture um, to to inspire them and even create more opportunities because that's what happened for for him. Okay, so I have a couple questions about that. One with the mental health. Um, so with there's like sixty, like one out of three girls nowadays in high school and young adults are thinking about suicide. And you're saying that you want these mental health, are you going to bring those to the schools? Because I'm pretty sure they're not seeking out mental health or seeking out therapy. Is there any way we can bring that into schools? What we have to do is we have to work uh, collaboratively across the board. Mm-hmm. So obviously the schools are, or if you don't, if the public doesn't know, schools are a separate government entity than right. the city of Stockton. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there are several different school boards per se. So I have a good relationship with the County Office of Education. Um, Also, uh, there's uh, a space, um, I have a good relationship with the District Attorney's Office as well because we're talking about mental health that impacts our students, but also we're talking about opioids that Mm -hmm. impact our students as well. Um, Specifically fentanyl right now is at, is at the forefront, that, that poison. And so I'm working with the DA's office uh, re- to get some advertisements out there, to get information and support out there um, to our youth and to our young adults in, in the community. So we have to be at the same table regarding these critical issues impacting our youth um, and, and work together to get that information before them and their families. Is there any way we can like not criminalize opioids? Because I don't look at it as a criminal thing aspect i look at it as somebody saying they need help without saying it and there's a strong argument that uh, that you just made right right? but then there is a criminal aspect of it too for the people who are supplying those opioids Uh and that's that's not okay correct and that's unacceptable right and it's educating our students and letting them know that you have an outlet you have people you have a support system that you could reach out to, um, a number that you can contact if, if you feel like you need some assistance. Or here's, 
here's information that will educate you on on this particular uh, subject and empower you to make the right decision when you're faced with making one. How are you guys do, going about that, getting that information out there? Because I know when I was in high school, when that information came to me on my desk, I was just like, I don't care. Well, it gets out there through strategic marketing campaigns right. and working with the school districts and meeting meeting the, the different demographics, you know, young mm-hmm. people, uh, older people on the platforms that they're at, too, when it comes to social media. And then also, okay, about Jason, or I'm not going to say his name, but the guy you're working with. <laughs> See, see, she a snitch. I'm gonna like, she I a just, snitch. I'm like, she put a snitch. it out there, no, so I know who it is. But so the so specific gonna... program is I am ready, right? And and it is um, Jason Lee, right? Uh, uh, through Hollywood Unlocked and his Hollywood Cares Foundation is is the person that's trying to bring this to the city of Stockton. Right. See, I wasn't gonna put his name because I'm gonna ask. Um, do you think? Do you, do you look at people's backgrounds and do you think that bringing these people in is a good idea after you look at these at their background? If people looked at other people's background in order to make a decision moving forward, mm-hmm. um, then I believe in second chances right. or and I'm not saying, you know, that's not directed towards Jason, but I'm right. just saying in general, I, I believe in second chances. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I always encourage every every time I go to a school and engage a young per- person, I say, don't be afraid of, of don't be afraid of failure. Mm-hmm. Don't let your past mistakes um, dictate what your future could look like. Learn from those mistakes. The key is just not to make those mistakes over and over again. Um, now, at the same time when the city looks to partner with somebody, there's a whole vetting process that that person in that organization has to go through and Mm -hmm. with a lot of checks and balances. Um, And and that's a very transparent process with that organization because we wanna make sure that we're we're providing the best service and the highest use service to the community. Right. And I I think also too, like what, what, what you were saying about like, you know the vetting process and just looking looking at background and just you know if if we as a, as a society just continue to just base base judgment off of somebody's background right then that hinders growth and and and, and productivity well i'm just thinking you know? about council culture because you know a lot of people counsel and then be like oh wow you're working with him oh wow so as long as you're saying that you vetted him or vetted anyone, not just him. I don't mean just him, but like vetted them or like um, people have second chances. I just asking in that aspect because I know people would be asking, like, do you see what people say or whatever? That's all I'm asking. Mm-hmm. People not talk about part. people talk about me all the time and they don't even know me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how I respond to that is what makes the difference. Right. You see, because uh, at the heart of it, I want to I want a relationship or rapport with you because uh, I'm in it to best represent this city the best I can and to work with everybody. So you may prejudge me because of uh, you may think or we have political different political ideologies. But I see past that. I'm probably going to be one of the most apolitical politicians uh, that that are out there. Right? I could work with anybody as long as you're willing to work with me. It may not go 100% your way. It may not go 100% my way. But at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, we're going to be able to have this conversation, hash out what we feel is 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 a good agreement, you know, and suitable for the community, and then move forward and walk away from that conversation knowing that we heard each other out. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yes. most definitely. Conversations need to be had, especially in the city of Stockton. Every, I feel like yeah. there should be, like, teaching in high school <laughs> how to talk to people. Because I feel like coming out of high school, I know for a lot of people, it was just like, you know, you fight because someone says something. But, like, I feel like there needs to be a class that tells you, no, this is how you communicate with people. I think communicate, even in college, communicating with people is difficult, and I think people need to be taught how to communicate. Everything rides on effective communication, Mm -hmm. bottom line. Whatever you're dealing with, no matter what setting, it rides on how well and how effective we communicate. And when I talk to students, and I actually I just did a seminar, a leadership, effective leadership and team building seminar with Delta College uh, last week. And uh, I, I said, when you think about effective communication and, and, and leadership and team building, 
the acronym I use is ACT. ACT. As an individual, as, as an individual be accessible. The A, be communita- communicative. And um, uh, be teachable. It's important. Teachable is very important because a lot of people think that they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> you could do if you could focus and and, and commit to de- personal development, lifetime personal development in those three areas, you'll be effect. You'll be an effective communicator. You'll be an effective leader. You'll be an effective team le- team uh, builder anywhere you go in whatever field you. The learning should. the learning don't doesn't stop. Learning never stops. Mm-hmm. I learned that. Uh, oh my gosh, learning never stops, especially in our area. How we're like all technical. Everything changes every five minutes. Mics will be different <laughs> by next oh, yeah, week. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, culture is constantly evolving. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Society is constantly evolving. Technology is constantly evolving and changing. And, and we have to be adapt. We have to be able to adapt. Okay. I, talking about adaptability, you know, and, and we've been talking about a lot of, uh, you know, like the youth programs. We talk about a whole lot of – I want to bring this full back circle on how you – have been able to adapt, you know, growing growing up in Stockton, where being there's, you know, we is no secret that Stockton has a high crime rate, you know, but the people here are so proud, right, you know, um, of being from Stockton, and how have you been able to adapt, you know, within the community to be where you're at now? It's all about engagement. It it's all about staying engaged, staying out, visible, present, being accessible. That's that first you know, part of that acronym, ACT, is accessible. I, tr- I try to make myself accessible. Um, I know what drives me, helps me wake up in the morning and keep me going is the fact that I know how good this city has been to me and my family for multiple generations. My grandfather immigrated here from Mexico on my mother's side when he was 16 years old. Uh, he established a career in Stockton at a local cannery. He retired the same year he retired at 62 years old. Back in the day, he, he got his citizenship that same year, bought his first house. Right? I mean, so this city has been been really, really good to me. And, and just to be able to be in a position as mayor to give back to the city, um, it's humbling. And it's emotional at times because... My heart is in it. I, I tell people the city of Stockton is is getting the best years of my life because <laughs> I'm only 42. <laughs> look, like, you ain't. I'm, I'm looking at you right now. You don't have any gray hair, right? It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> all hit at one time. But but the tail no, end. But the tail end of it. Uh, watch. To Obama, he was all clean, <laughs> and all of a sudden, when he was out, it was all gray hair. He looked like he smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? You are you ready for this life, Mayor? Right. You ready for the gray hairs? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I have to grow up one day. <laughs> right? Oh, that's funny. That's funny. But that's so real, though, right? And so being from Stockton and being, you know, being ra- ra- like raised here, born here, raised here, um, what, is, what are some changes like you've seen as, you know, going, you know, has, that you've experienced as a child, you know, from your childhood to now? And, you know, maybe some of the things were like, okay, I've seen things where maybe this this has worked as in my childhood where like maybe it's outdated nowadays especially with technology yeah and like a, a lot of people when they go to school I know a youth when they go to school and they leave school when we back in the day school would be over none of the bullying now there's bullying on the phone like you're literally going home with the bullies in your pocket so yeah I'm just adding that <laughs> Well, and that's definitely another area like we were talking about um, uh, mental health and opioids. And bullying is another one of those campaigns as well uh, for kids. But technology, the biggest change, the biggest change from my generation to today's generation. Is it, is it Google? Is it Google? <laughs> All the above. <laughs> it's the Internet. It's, it's Google. It's all the social media platforms, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, right? The TikToks. And and what's unique about it is each generation or each demographic, uh, they gravitate to a different type of platform, 
Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of students, a lot of kids on TikTok mm-hmm. and, and um, YouTube, uh, a lot of maybe uh, Gen Zs or the younger generation, millennials on Instagram, a lot of the older generation. The boomers. Facebook. Boomers, X, Facebook, they're on Facebook. For sure. <laughs> for sure. For yeah, sure. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So like, for me today, it's I have to be intentional about adapting to that and meeting people where they're at with information and being accessible on those di- different platforms as well and doing it in a manner that connects with them on those platforms. Is that, that, well is that difficult? Because like in the audience, um, an audience usually, those all those different audience, and you're, you're a mayor, so you have to get to all those different audience. Is, is that difficult to do that? And, there, know, and yeah, as, and there's always going to be critics too, though. Like, right. and on 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 every level, right? So, yeah, especially kids because they'd be listening to their parents and they wanted to type it out. Like, <laughs> well, the key is making people a part of the process. So it's not just a one way communication or a one way post or interaction or engagement on those platforms. It's two ways because I'm meeting you where they're where you're at, and I'm involving you and making you a part of that as well. So if I'm at a school and uh, following my school visits, uh, we we roll up a highlight reel or a reel for for TikTok, Uh, the kids love it and they share it because they're a part of it. They they see themselves in it uh, and it's a real authentic experience. And and that's what it's all about. And because those are platforms where you can also build community. And if we want a healthier Stockton, we have to have healthier communities, and that's virtually, <laughs> through social media, and physically, in our neighborhoods. It's already been 30 minutes, but we have so much more to get into, so make sure you guys tune back in for a part two. Part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> <laughs> 209 Talk has been a production of KWDC 93.5 LPFM, Delta College Radio, This program is made possible by listeners like you. Programming is produced by the students, staff, and faculty of San Joaquin Delta College's Digital Media Department. It is supported by the Delta College Department of Arts, Humanities, and Multimedia, the Career Technical Education and Workforce Development Office, and the State of California. This is a collaboration with the City of Stockton Mayor's Office. Thank you for listening.